welcome our first warrior to the cage, fighting out of the blue corner. Give it up for Sao Paulo, Brazil's own Fernando Boy Problem Coleman. And here he is, the undefeated Fernando Coleman. 19 years old. Watch out for this young man. It's a catchweight fight. Weighed in at 68 kilos. And Fernando Coleman, man, what can you say? He hasn't taken a loss in his career. Five big W's looking to keep the train rolling tonight in Kirishima. See if Brazil can pick up another dub. Again, I'm just amazed that these young kids have 19 years old and he already has six fights. Well, they're starting so young now. And uh, I mean, that just goes to show you how the game has changed and how these guys are starting so young. They start training jiu-jitsu, start wrestling so young, of course. And it's just that natural, that natural progression into MMA. These guys are just absolute machines as soon as they get to the pro territory. And you know, just events like Brave gives these guys the opportunities to get in there and showcase their skills. That's why these, event, these promotions are so important. And you know, of the five wins, four of those come by submission. So you better believe that Coleman is going to want to bring this thing down to the ground. We're seeing rear naked chokes and an arm bar and a split decision victory. Coleman can get it done. Let's bring in our next combatant. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and let's welcome his opponent to the cage. Fighting out of the red corner. Fighting out of Brazil. Put your hands together for Julio Cesar Neves. Well, it looks like no matter what, Brazil's gonna win this one. So the streak's gonna continue. It is Brazil versus Brazil here. And Julio Cesar Neves, 22 years old, with an incredible record too. I mean, an absolute beast. 22 years old, they call him Morsequinho. His record, get this, 32 wins and one loss. Wow. Is That's he fighting every weekend or what's he doing That's here? unbelievable. And he's 22 years old. 28 of those 32 wins come by way of a finish, 19 TKOs and nine submissions. So he can get it done however you want to do it. Julio Cesar Neves, one of the most impressive records that I've ever seen on a 22-year-old. Very well-rounded fighter, has a wide array of attacks. Taking a look at his most recent record, he has a win over Carlison Dos Santos. That was a second round submission and a conda choke. Before that, it was a unanimous decision victory of Hineri Bueno. So he gets it done in so many ways. Elbows and punch, TKO, spinning back kick and punches, rear naked chokes, head kicks. Let's take a look at your tail of the tape. 19 and 22, these guys are young, hungry studs looking to finish fights. It's time to get things started. Let's go to Carlos Kramer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our next battle takes place in the catchweight division. Three five-minute rounds. Our first fighter fighting out of the blue corner. He's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of five wins and no losses. He stands 1.77 centimeters tall and weighs already 68.9 kilograms. Fighting out of San Paulo, Brazil. Give it up for Fernando Boy Problem Coleman. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of three wins and two losses. He stands. 1.78 centimeters tall and weighs in at a ready 66 kilograms. Fight out of Brazil. Give it up for Julio Cesar Neves. Your referee, Joao Suarez. And there he is, Joao Suarez is going to get things started. Our official in this catch weight bout of 68 kilos. And two tough customers here. 32 and 2 is Neves against the undefeated 
opponent. And here we go, time to go to war here. And Yevis looks like he's going to work right away. Not wasting any time is Nevis, a very, very aggressive fighter. Coleman backing up. He's in the white with the yellow trim is Coleman, and the all white is Nevis. Man, you get to see the power out of Nevis right out of the gate. Coleman using in and out, using his feet, very, or Nevis using his feet very well, in and out. Boy, shaking, juking and jiving already is Neves trying to put on a show here for the fans. Inside leg kick. Coleman felt that one. These guys are trading inside leg kicks a little bit. Another one. You're watching Brave 3 being seen in 33 countries this evening. The battle in Brazil rages on. and It is Brazil versus Brazil in this one. Neves with kickboxing like fight record here at 22. You see kickboxers with records like that. You normally don't see MMA fighters, and this is a guy that's just trial by fire, get out there and fight, and he's winning most of his fights. Not at 22 years old do you see a record like that. It's a new age, Frankie Edgar. It's a new age. Nice going to the body there a little bit, finishing up with that inside leg kick again. Fernando Coleman looking to play counterpuncher here. Inside leg kick of his own from Coleman. Nice shot to the body. Now Coleman is a guy that has fought welterweight on a number of occasions. Dropped down in this one and gets to 68 kilos. Smart move for him because of the height disadvantage up at welterweight. Now a better spot to be in there at lightweight. Yeah, absolutely. He's giving up a lot of height at welterweight. Hey, you know this life. You were yes. giving up a lot of height for yes. a while. So. That's my life story, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> He's got this guillotine locked up here. Let's see. Neves can literally win everywhere you want to take it. On the ground, standing up, finishing the fight is what he does. Submissions and TKOs on his record. Coleman can still finish his takedown. He just has to be weary of getting caught in that guillotine. Looks like we're at a stalemate position here. Yeah, Coleman not, not willing to take him down right now. I think feeling oh, the pressure. Oh. And with the height advantage of Neves, he could possibly oh, he get got? that standing guillotine. Oh, and he looked for a big knee. And, and now. The size a little bit of Coleman there, helping him out. Yeah, you can just tell the mass of Coleman Got his and he's a lot trapped. heavier on top. Coleman in half guard here. Let's see if he could do something with it. Good shoulder pressure. Keep in mind, of the five wins on Coleman's record, four of those are by submission. It's what he does, no TKOs on his resume. He has a split decision and four subs. So he's very comfortable on the ground, and he's going to look to exploit that. Some nice on elbows here. Again, you got to be careful underhooking that leg. You're leaving yourself open for those elbows. Nice shot to the body there by Coleman, trying to mix it up. Coleman giving some good shoulder pressure. That's a very uncomfortable position for Neves to be in. He looks like he's going to try to push that knee down to three-quarter mount. Neves trying to kind of scoot out, trying to shrimp and unable to do so, caught in that half guard. And unable to free that leg. Again, he's got to be careful reaching under there. Every time he does, Coleman makes him, punt, makes him pay with a big elbow. Those elbows, although very, very short, serious impact. You can see the red on Neves' leg from some of those leg kicks by Coleman also. Certainly a power advantage here for Coleman coming down from welterweight. And now with just 10 seconds left in the round, it's going to be Fernando Coleman finishing up on top and most likely taking that round just with that top game over the last minute and a half. 
Yeah, you know, a tough round there for Neves. Once he got on his back, he didn't have anywhere to go. And yeah, it seems like the size advantage that Coleman possesses is giving him some problems there. Let's take a look at the replay here. A lot of action in this one. Neves came out firing, but Coleman, once he brought it down to the ground, very impressive. And folks, that was just round one in this one. As we look at the replay, we'll be back from Curitiba. And right back here at Brave 3, you see the replay. And you know, I wonder if Neves is going to think about doing those jumping knees because that's what got caught him on the ground. It's not like Coleman took him down. So if he stays a little, uh, little more careful, he could keep this fight up on his feet. might be better off for him. Neves is a very unorthodox fighter, a guy that's very, very wild. And most opponents can't contain that energy, can't keep, it, can't keep them off of him. And Coleman's doing a great job of being patient Let's see if Coleman sees and it. fighting his fight. Tries to get the fight to the ground there. He's seen the advantage he had in that, at the end of round one. Round two is underway. As the fight continues here, as we see a little fancy footwork there from Fernando Coleman. The end of the first round might have gave Coleman some confidence. Looking for a big head kick there is Fernando Coleman. You're absolutely right. Oh, now throwing he is an axe looking, kick. Looking very aggressive now is Coleman using that momentum. Haven't really seen Nevis. Nevis a little bit more tentative now. He was very explosive there in round number one. Eating some elbows will do that to you. Oh, I can imagine. I try to stay away from those if all possible. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Braithy here from Curitiba, Brazil. Neves looking to close distance. Looking to use his power and his athleticism. I'd like to see Neves go back to using that in and out movement. His feet, his very good feet. Some nice inside leg kicks in round number one. And we'll see if he goes back to it. Stay following along, guys. Social media, Brave MMAF. That's on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And make sure to hashtag Brave3. Calling for action in the corner of Coleman. Shot to the body here, and th these guys not really willing to commit right now. They're yeah, Taking both, their time. Both being very very selective with their with their attacks. Neves just not letting go. Not he's not, leash, he's he? not, yeah. You know, I really think that end of that first round kind of spooked him a little. Doesn't want to give up a, another takedown. You don't you don't want to go. You that don't want to get away from your style of fighting. You can't. You got you gotta stay true to what you do best. There he goes with that in and out movement. Pop pop, get in, get out. I think that's his best bet. Especially against a bigger fighter. You don't want to stand there and just trade with him. You want to get in and get out. Yeah, Nevis has felt the power of Coleman, and he doesn't want to stand in the pocket with him. However, he there seems we go. to have the speed advantage. He needs to take advantage of that. Oh, big time speed advantage. Big kick and a miss there for Coleman as the battle for Brazil rages on here. Folks, of course, in our main event, going to be an absolute war between Lucas Martins and Fabio Galvan. Excited for that one. Yeah, me too. Uh, we we talked know. about it in our opening, a guy going from the bottom of the card to the top of the card. You just don't see it. I mean, that's just a huge opportunity for him, and I know he wants to make the best of it. And, you know, it's a tough mountain to climb with Martins. Martins has been at the top of the heap, you know, fought the best, has had a, you know, great run in the UFC, and... You know, I'm sure he's looking to get back to uh, his winning ways. And, you know, and, and the funny thing about it is, man, he went on that streak after leaving his previous company, and, and he made that choice to come to Brave. You know, I talked to him on an interview, and he said, man, it, it was a no-brainer. I had a lot of offers, but I wanted to be here with Brave. I like what they're doing, and that's a big testament there for the whole organization. Absolutely, you know, and just by seeing what they've done these past three events, I mean, it's a smart choice for him. Still, you know, these guys... We saw so much action in round number one, and now things are kind of turning into a stalemate between Neves 
And Fernando and the crowd seems to be getting a little uneasy as well. Oh, nice little. Is it something you notice when you're in there? I know a lot of some fighters don't hear any of it. Are yeah. You, are you one of the guys that does hear it? Uh, you know, when they're screaming my name, I sure hear it. <laughs> yeah. But when you hear the boos, and I, you know, I, I think the U.S., and I, and I love my country, but we have some pretty rowdy yeah, fans. Yeah, they're, they're tough. They're tough sometimes. You know, get a couple drinks in them by the end of the night. If they don't like something, they let everybody know it. But is, is it to the, just in your case, does it make you want to fight hard? Does it make you want to do more when you hear something like that? When yeah, you're I mean, a stalemate? I, luckily, I, I don't think any of my fights have been booed, you know? so, <laughs> so uh, This is true. This is true. <laughs> Again, Neves seems to back him up to that warning track, but not really pulling the trigger to get it done. Oh, oh and nice a big spinning, spinning heel kick. Wow. Just grazed him with that one. You know, but maybe enough activity to take the round between does, these two. Yeah. And I mean, when it's that close, something flashy like that does tend to give you the nod. And that's, and that's it. Wow. I mean, we're going to have to see something a lot better out of these two in the third and final round. That's round three, round two. We got more to come here from Kirachima. This is Brave 3. And we're back here in Brazil. And yeah, tough. We could easily be one and one here. One no. round apiece. So someone's going to have to really uh, turn it up in this third round. No, neither fighter can really coast here in round number three. They're going to have a, have a definitive winning round here in the third and final round. And really want to see Neves, I mean, in his position, just to stay at it. Throw those wild kicks, be yourself, stay true to yourself, and attack. Yeah, he needs to have some more volume this round to separate himself from uh, Coleman. You know, I always I always uh, kind of harken back to Leonard Garcia, a guy that just through his activity would win fights. And he, not even necessarily landing shots, he was just always busy all the time and really got some, you know, something that people call it controversial victories by decision just because he was super busy. Listen, if you're busy, that means the other guy's not doing anything. You can't, if you don't do anything, you can't win a fight. You gotta go to the more active fighter. And here we go, right back to it. Coleman and Neves. Both fighters are going to have to leave an impression here on the judges if it does go the distance, but both of them have knockout power, so watch out, folks. All right, here we go. A little more action here. Coleman doing a good job of pressing forward. Oh, but it looks like that he, to the body. Looks like he hit him that the chest. I think he knocked him off balance with that one. Nevis has to get into a groove and get back to what he does best if he wants to win this fight. Coleman has to be a little bit more aggressive and maybe a little Ooh, quicker nice with his spin. counters. Back fist. Those shots are sneaky. Sometimes they'll sneak through. That could be lights out. Lightning quick here is Julio Cesar Neves. The reason why he has 32 victories to his name. You know, the more Coleman throws, it seems like Nieves can counter. So maybe that's making uh, Coleman not want to throw as much. Yeah, Coleman definitely not a, a recipe for success right now, the way he's fighting. See right here, this is where Nieves needs to let it go. No, Stay in range, not close the distance, but if Coleman can't up. back up when he's up against them fest, he needs to take advantage of that. Nice overhand right there from Nieves. Maybe a little tentative of Coleman's power, but you're right, he needs to capitalize. Seems like he's getting in the groove a little bit more now here. And Coleman chasing him down, he grabs onto the fence, but just for a moment, just enough to stay upright. He's Neves was a savvy move. Coleman's gotta work up, try to get to the back or to the other leg to get to, to finish the double. Singles are really hard to, to finish, especially when we're sweaty here in the third round. And Neves back to that guillotine. Saw Neves didn't try anything wild there that time. We saw it in round one. He went for that big jumping knee and ended up on the bottom for two minutes. This time, a little smarter. He wants to keep this thing standing. Had a lot of finishes tonight. You got to wonder if we're going to get another one. I think normally you see a finish out of these two, but they've kind of canceled each other out. Yeah, I agree. Something you see when you get two great fighters together. It's a game of chess, you know, sometimes uh, you don't want to make that, that one mistake that can cost you the match. 
Again, this is where Neves needs to do something. Uh, and he's not making any new fans here as Neves. People want to see these two start to unload. Not necessarily give the fans a show, but be dominant in round three. I mean, Coleman's got to do something too. The fight, the fight could e easily be in his favor if he gets this round. Still pretty even in this round. I think Neves has been a little more active. Good head movement there by Julio Cesar Neves. Staying on the balls of his feet, but not really pushing the issue here. He, I'd like to see him go to the body and open things up. He's faint, he needs to throw. Oh, there we go. Little cartwheel kick. We'll take it. Spinning back kick and punches, one of his victories as of late, just about a year ago. The guy has crazy, crazy techniques and really wild striking. We've seen flashes of it here. Nice switch kick. Doesn't quite connect. Blocked by Coleman. Ah, Coleman, one of his own. One minute left. Let's see what we're going to do. Someone, someone's got to turn it on. Got to try to win the round. Who's it going to be, Neves or Coleman? Neves. Keeps missing with that left high kick. Backing him down. Like Superman, man. Superman. This guy has punch, some yeah. really, really quick I think he's twist. pretty much throwing the textbook at us. Bouncing again. Could he be looking for another unorthodox strike? Another highlight real finish. 15 seconds to go. Looking for the takedown. Looking for the takedown, maybe to cinch the round for Coleman. 10 seconds to do so. Can he put him on his back? Ooh, nice elbow. The quick striking of Julio Cesar Neves. Did he do enough to win this fight? They can't all be yeah. fight of the night. No, they can't. That's what and I they... like to call a palate cleanser. <laughs> and welcome back to Brave 3, the Battle of Brazil. And we'll go to the judges. It'll be interesting to see how they see this fight going on your scorecards, Edgar. Yeah. What I, do you think? I think Neves did enough in that third round just with the flashiness. And he did push Coleman to the fence more and, you know, control the center of the cage. So if it was, if I was on the score, if I was on the judges' uh, duty tonight, I think I would pick Neves. We will find out here in just a few moments as they compile the scorecards here and the fans are anxiously awaiting the winner of this one. Fernando Coleman, Julio Cesar Neves. And it looks like we may have a decision here in just a moment. We have uh, Carlos Kramer stepping up here with the scorecards. What a fight here. Two very, very talented fighters, but just unable to pull the trigger. We'll see who gets the win. Let's go to Carlos Kramer. He has our official decision. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what about that was? We go to the judges' scorecard. We have the judges scoring 30, 27, 30, 27, and 29, 28. For your winner, out of the red corner, Julio Cesar Neves! What a win there by Julio Cesar Neves. He did enough, just as we suspected. It was the activity, staying busy, and that's what got the victory for Neves.